Ooh, man, let's go ahead and jump right into this one, gang. Yeah, what up, gang? What up, squad? It is your boy, Ethereum. It's the realest, the coolest, the trillest young king. On to problem as we speak. Welcome back from the lit banger, gang. I'm sorry if y'all hear it clucking like, bam, 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 bam. It's my son walking in some big ass shoes, bruh. He uh, likes to play dress up, so he's wearing his brother's shoes. Anyway, um, we got Patrick CC in the building, man. I know y'all love watching these videos. Um, we got Steve Burns live to you. But it's okay. He escaped Blue's Clues. So I don't know if y'all know Blue's Clues, but when I was younger, we used to watch it all the time on Nickelodeon and uh, Nick Jr. and all that, you know, BS. And it was went from Steve to like, it was Steve and then there was John, I think. I can't remember, but it wasn't Steve. And uh, Steve was always a little weird to me. I'm like, bro, you a grown man playing on this. You know what I'm saying? But like, I don't judge. I just, I state facts. You feel me? So obviously something was up at home. So we're gonna go ahead and check it out and see what we'll see what he's talking about. If you're new, subscribe. Please watch the video all the way through, man. My view duration has been, you know, and I've been watching some fire videos. So like, what, what will keep y'all watching longer? Like, what do y'all want me to do? Like, you know, pull a rabbit out of my butt or something? I don't know, man. But just watch the video all the way through if you can. I really appreciate it. All right, let's get it. Bang. April 29th, 2002, Season 4, Episode 24 of Blue's Clues. See? Steve Burns announced to the world that he was leaving for college and would be replaced <laughs> by his brother, Joe. This is Joe! Oh, shit, Joe. So, first of all, Steve talking about he's leaving for college. <laughs> first of all, homie never went to school. Second of all, this dude got five hours shadow with band-aids on his face from shaving. Bro, you are not a teenager. You are a 40-year-old man. Fuck are you talking about, V? Yeah, and this dude, now this dude look a little younger. He look a little bit better. Like, he look more, he can, he fits in more. You know what I'm saying? But I don't know. And I, bro, one thing I love about Blue's Clues, bro, he used to have that little handy-dandy notebook and he used to draw shit. Ah, oh, I sucked at drawing. I sucked at drawing, but I just wanted to draw so good. But anyway, yeah, that's that's funny. He went to college. But that was a lie. The truth is, Steve Burns never wanted to be on children's television in the first place, and he was finally able to escape. But because of this lie, some disturbing rumors were brought to light. The most believed rumor was that Steve had died in a fatal car crash. A more ridiculous rumor was that he was murdered by the Blue's Clues producers, or died in an unsuccessful attempt to fight the Taliban. However, the most believable theory was that Steve was depressed, got addicted to H, and rebelled against the kid show to start a rock band. And that theory wasn't entirely false. While the public saw a seemingly cheerful demeanor on screen, Steve struggled with his depreciating mental health off screen. I didn't know it yet, but I was the happiest depressed person in North America. I was struggling with severe clinical depression the whole time I was on that show. Steve's job was to be happy, uplifting full of joy and wonder all the time. Yeah. He had to pretend to be interested and amazed at the smallest things, like discovering Blue's paw print that was directly in front of him. <laughs> he spent 10 hours per day filming. Yo, he was, he would have made a awesome YouTuber if, of course, if he wasn't going through his trials and tribulations, as y'all can see, he was going through his own mental issues. But when you're a YouTuber, just like us, the reaction channel, we gotta be over the top. Like, whoa, did you see that dude? What? It was crazy! You know, we gotta always be, you know, and if we're not, then we were born, we're this, we're that. You know what I'm saying? So, homie is right. For him to be like, where's clues? Blue's clues. Blue, 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 blue. And blue will be right there. You know what I'm saying? And then he's talking to an invisible dog. Blue was not real. First of all, blue was a girl, if y'all didn't know. But blue was not real. So he was the only one on the set. Talking to itself, keeping us all entertained. Children, y'all know how children, uh, 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 the attention span be be short. Bro, we watched that whole 30 minutes show without even freaking flinching, bro. Come on, man. He was it before it was a thing. <laughs> An empty blue room so that he could be superimposed on the digitally animated world of Blue and her friends. At the time, See? technology right. wasn't as advanced as today, meaning Steve had nothing visual or tangible to work with. Steve said his experience was awful and compared it to acting at the bottom of a swimming pool. Pools are filled with water, so stay hydrated. As if his experience wouldn't be any more taxing on his mental health, 
The insane things posted about him online made things even worse. Take this game on Newgrounds, for example, where your objective was to destroy Blue and then assassinate Steve. You eliminate the dog, then go into the house where Steve is flipping you off. So you shoot him until his head pops off and then the house burns down. He wow. also had to read creepy fan fiction, like this one that romanticizes the idea of Blue assaulting Steve with a deadly weapon. For some reason, people love the idea of stripping the innocence away from a children's TV Fast. show and trying to create a disturbing narrative around it. To that? this day, TikTokers express theories that Steve is a drug addict living in a crack house and that his hallucinations <laughs> cause him to talk to inanimate objects, which come to life. People also believe that the children's voices we occasionally hear are actually Steve's neglected children, helplessly watching him feed into his addiction. Or the reason Steve what? is excited whenever he gets mail yeah, is because it either includes the welfare check he plans to spend on more drugs or contains the drugs themselves. Most of the time, rumors like this are easily dismissed. But for some reason, millions of people all around the world genuinely believe them. It's likely that even you have some random conspiracy theory about Steve embedded into your brain. However, most people just thought he died. An easy one to disprove, wow. but it still worried him. I'm starting to think that maybe there's something people know that I don't know. In November 1999, the New York Times published an article detailing Steve Burns' time working on Blue's oh, Clues and Burns. described the show's impact on children. Most notably, the article addressed the unsettling rumors surrounding Mr. Burns' well-being. The rumors were so prominent that the talk show host Rosie O'Donnell Rosie invited o Steve to appear on her show. I died a whole lot of different ways, Steve. Bro, what is going on here, bro? It's Powerball Jackpot on Lotto.com. Recalled, Rosie's kid is a big fan, so I just went on and said, Hi, I'm alive. Bye. It was pretty easy to prove I wasn't dead. These rumors were so powerful that Steve felt the need to address Rosie O'Donnell's child with I'm alive because he knew children around the world were genuinely concerned about him. Yeah, because you have to care. keep in mind that Blue's Clues was the highest rated premiere of any Nickelodeon program and became crucial to the network's growth. It wow, was a pioneer in interactive no TV. The original Blue's Clues engaged its preschool age audience by breaking the fourth wall and speaking directly into the camera. Millions of kids around the world felt a deep and that. personal connection to Steve, like which made these rumors more potent. It also made his exit from the show more detrimental. Mr. Burns was 22 when the show premiered, and as he approached his 30s, it was time to move on. Bro, he was, bro, I promise you that motherfucker. I, let me not curse. I'm trying not to curse, man, because they keep yellow marking me. But, bro, I don't understand. The dude looked at 30, bro, 30 plus from the jump. Now, some people do look a little older sometimes. You know, that's just genetics, but... He was 22 when it started, meaning he had to have been at least 29, 20, 28 when it got done, meaning still in his 20s. But he looked at 40. What the heck? Old truth about his departure. I knew I wasn't going to be doing children's television all my life, mostly because I refused to lose my hair on a kid's TV show. And it was happening. Steve knew that his baldness would ruin his boyish look and appeal. The network insisted that he wear a wig, but he refused. Combine this with his depreciating mental health, it was finally time oh, to exit. He hat. told the viewers goodbye That's in his why. final send-off, alongside his new replacement Joe, and children around the world thought he was just going to go to college and he would return shortly. They were mistaken. Steve was not off to college. He was about to embark on his journey Stop. of being the lead singer Stop. of a psychedelic Stop. rock band. Steve was interested in music way before Blue's Clues. Steve Burns attended Boyertown Area Senior High School in Berks County, Pennsylvania, graduating in 1992. He played in bands called Shit. Sudden Impact, Nine Pound Truck, and The Ivies. He continued playing music on the side while pursuing an acting scholarship at DeSales University in the Lehigh Valley. Shortly after being discovered by an agent, Steve dropped out of school and moved to New York City to become a professional actor. In 95, Steve arrived in Nickelodeon under the impression he was auditioning for a voiceover role for a game show, but then later found out it was for a kid show. Steve was a grungy 90s skate rock kid what with long hell? hair and earrings, not the ideal fit for the job. Tracy Page Johnson, executive producer and co-creator of Blue's Clues, says that he didn't want to be a children's host. Of the 100 people we auditioned, he was by far the realist. He loved kids, hey. but he didn't want to make a career out of it. Damn. Steve didn't want to be on children's television. He wanted to make music, and after he stepped away from the show, he could finally make his dreams a reality. Rock, rock, rock. In 1999, Steve walked into a party in New York where he heard the Man, Flaming Lips fine. 1999 album, The Soft Bulletin, for the first time, considered by many to be the Flaming Lips' masterpiece. 
This moment changed Burns' life and reignited a passion for music he thought Blue's Clues had burned away. From there, he acquired Pro Tools and started writing songs. I had literally been doing nothing but talking to objects made of felt for six years. There was this weird creative constipation going on. Steve wrote roughly 35 songs in one sitting, but selected Damn. 12 to feature on his debut album, Songs really for Dust Mites. It. Now it was time to get in the studio to record, so he contacted his favorite producer, Dave Fridman, who had worked with the Flaming Lips in the past. Interestingly enough, Fridman had just held a Blue's Clues themed birthday party for his children, so he was eager to see what creative potential Steve had. Steve sent Dave some demos, assuming he'd think they sucked, but he got the opposite reaction. Dave liked it, and he asked if Steven Drozd, the drummer of the Flaming Lips, could come and work on some music with them. In a dream world even Blue's Clues couldn't have imagined, the Flaming Lips wanted to work with Steve. The bassist, Michael Ivins, later joined the team as well, helping engineer several sessions. The lead vocalist, Wayne Coyne, actually approached crazy? Steve with the offer to star in a movie he was directing called Christmas on Mars. He was hesitant at first, but ultimately accepted the role. Because of Steve's ridiculous story of leaving a kid's show and starting a band, there was a flurry of interest from various record labels. He ultimately signed with Pius Records so in late 2002 age. when a label executive sat him down and said, This makes sense. I don't know why, but there's a thread of logic between Blue's Clues, The Flaming Lips, and your record. And he was right. Something about the perfectly innocent image of a children's show, combined with the amount of insane rumors surrounding Steve, leading to being a frontman of a psychedelic rock band, was a crazy storyline. Burns professionally entered the world of rock music following the release of his indie rock album Songs for Dust Mites in August of 2003. Although the 12-track album did not garner much commercial success, it received wow. praise from critics, as Pitchfork gave the project- Bro, they probably was like, damn, son, how a dude from a kid's show, like, flip it and then start doing rock or was it is it rock right just music in general bro just being a magician is hard enough coming from being a kid show like you know especially a kid show as influential as blues clues bruh you gotta really you gotta give him his flowers man you gotta give him his flowers because i didn't even know he was doing all that i ain't gonna lie to you a 7.8 out of 10, and complimented Burns' lyrical insight and gift for writing and arranging endlessly listenable pop songs. You can actually hear one of the songs from the album, Mighty Little Man, as the opening theme for the CBS series, Young Sheldon. Despite releasing music and starring in a horror comedy film called Nether Beast, rumors surrounding Steve's death resurfaced on the internet again. Burns told MTV in late 2007 that he was starting to take it personally. I guess the world would prefer that I was once you think about it, bro, it do sound like, yeah, they prefer to have them up dead. Like, you know what I'm saying? Why do they keep Download saying the that? Download the app you know? today and become a piece oh, of the yeah, high yeah, yeah, like, nigga, just, like, like pizza. he's not. Get over it. Fuck. Dead but I'm not listening. I should really just create a website with my vital Locking statistics up. on it. It could be live. There has to be a way hey, I can hook up a heart monitor smart. to my computer just to let people know I'm alive. To this day, Steve's Instagram handle is Steve Burns Alive with a bio that reads, I've seen the meme. Unfortunately yeah. for Steve, he didn't exactly become the rock star he dreamed of being. Most of his buzz from his first project was earned due to the juxtaposition of his Blue's Clues career. After that, he started another band, Steve Burns and the Struggle, alongside the Flaming Lips Steven Drozd and a million billion frontman Ryan Smith. The collective released an album, Deep Sea Recovery Efforts, in 2009, but it failed to do anything substantial. For many years, Steve disappeared from the spotlight. Slowly but surely, rumors of his death, addiction, and God knows what else made their way back onto the internet. But in 2017, Steve got a call that he never thought he would get. Nickelodeon gave the original creators of Blue's Clues permission to develop a reboot of the series after multiple failed attempts. Yeah. Nickelodeon posted a video announcing that they were looking for a new host of the show. Steve helped the creators during the casting process, and after 1,000 auditions, they eventually selected Josh De La Cruz, who was an understudy for Disney's Aladdin on Broadway for five years. De La Cruz would play Steve and Joe's cousin, Josh. Ha! Steve was initially reluctant to continue his association with the show, but was persuaded by its fans on social media to write, direct, and appear on the show. The reboot, Blue's Clues and You, has been a huge success following its premiere, really? producing four seasons before being renewed for a fifth early last year. Keep in mind, most people that. had no idea this even happened. Me? Unless you have kids or very young siblings, you probably never knew that Steve returned to the show. But in 2021, Nick Jr.'s Twitter account posted a video for the 25th anniversary. Now, I remember this dude, this picture, right? It was like a meme going going crazy with this picture. It's like, 
I don't know if they was calling him a molester. So I don't know, but I remember this picture, bro. It was a minute ago, bro. But yeah, y'all y'all comment right now. Y'all remember that shit. We have Blue's Clues featuring Steve, and we all thought he had returned from the dead. Hi. You got a second? Okay. You remember how, when we were younger, we used to, um run around and hang out with Blue and find clues and talk to Mr. Salt and freak out about the mail and do all the fun stuff. And then <laughs> one day I was like, oh, hey, guess what? Big news, I'm leaving. Uh, this is my brother Joe, he's your new best friend. And then I just got on a bus and I left. And we didn't see each other for like a really long time. Can we just talk about that? Great, because I, I realized that, that that was kind of abrupt. Steve went on to explain what happened to his character, continuing the fake story of him going to college, because having a really unsuccessful rock band was not the narrative Nickelodeon wanted to continue. <laughs> but his ability to speak through the camera and develop a one-on-one -on -one connection with the viewer resonated deeply with Blue's Clues fans. It's like we were all five years old again. The post was retweeted 700,000 times and liked by 1.9 million people. I think the overwhelming engagement is a huge testament to how powerful these rumors were over the years. Literally millions of people around the world thought he was a criminal, a drug addict, or Damn, dead. It's almost as if people dude. wanted to believe them, Fast. because the rumors were debunked numerous times over the years. So for him to essentially return from the shadows after two decades was shocking for so many people. This return finally put the rumors to rest. Steve Burns is not a child predator, he is not a drug addict, he is not a criminal, and most certainly, not dead. Although he didn't want to be in kids TV originally, he doesn't regret it at all. I hope I'll be remembered for that show for the rest of my life. That will always be a part of my identity, and I'm totally cool with that. Respect. Today, Burns travels to colleges around the country to speak to students about mental health because those rumors destroyed his, and now he's using that to help you improve yours. Damn, bro. Respect, Yang Shan. We respect that because that was a, a big, you know, thing in my life, you know, watching Blue's Clues or there, but I'm glad he was uh, doing good, you know, he's doing good now, I, I heard different things about him myself, um, don't really play into the BS, you know what I'm saying, but, you know, the stories were crazy, you feel me, yeah, y'all let me know if y'all ever watched Blue's Clues and if y'all, you know, fuck with Steve, you know what I'm saying, was he a, was he a real one, uh, is he a real one, you know, and what impact did Blue's Clues have on you guys, watch out baby. Um, if you're new, subscribe, like the video, comment some more bangers I want to check out. Till next time, your boy's out. Deuces. Bye.